If there's anything that we're learning right now during this lockdown, if there's anything that we're learning through this crisis of people not being able to go to work, it's dealing with this one component of thinking that we're powerless, that we're isolated, that we can't do anything about it. What am I talking about? Excuses. See, in this moment right now, a lot of people are facing a lot of excuses. And through my conversation with people on Facebook Live and Instagram Live, I'm gonna go through the five excuses that people are making for themselves of why they can't get ahead, at least financially, to become in the financial status they need to be to pay the bills, to put a roof over the head, and obviously, if you're watching this YouTube channel, how to become the first generation millionaire in their family. So stay tuned, I'm gonna share with the five excuses how you need to get over these things and why you need to go over these things, so therefore you can get to the next financial step in your life, starting in three, two, one. All right, what's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from the Money Smart Movement Team headquarters, the home of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Great to be with you. I'm your Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala. And uh, wow, this is like 45 days of no normal situations happening in anybody's life. There's a period of time here that uh, people are saying, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm really clamoring right now. The last 45 days, we've been doing webinars and Zooms, online conferences, literally three, four times a week. And then we've been ask, asking these people this question, how many weeks does a typical person in America start to panic when they have no income coming in? I think I saw a Prudential report that said people have, have uh, four or five weeks of panic when they have no income coming in. So we started asking, you know, boots on the ground, asking people on our webinars, hundreds and hundreds of people are coming to our webinars, asking us questions, looking for a financial direction in their life. And they tell us, not a Prudential survey, we're talking to a multicultural middle-class America, people start panicking two weeks in with no income. So forget the Prudential report, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you that's watching this YouTube channel right now saying, how do we fix this problem of being financially pushed back against the wall and feeling that we're isolated and powerless with nothing we can do about it? So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you the five excuses that we've been seeing, the five excuses that people have been telling us, common excuses that have been coming our way and how you can overcome it. And uh, I'm telling you, there's two different types of people that's coming through this moment right now and how they're going to improve. The two different types of choice that you have right now to come through this situation to improve is either you grow by choice, you say, no, I'm gonna be proactive and get ahead of this thing, or I'm gonna grow by force, you're reactive. And with that being said, I was a guy that learned reactively. I remember going through my first crisis, financial crisis, and I know some of you are saying, well, Matt, it's not a pandemic. I get it, but I was in my own financial top of pandemic situation moment in 1996, late 90s, when I went through a divorce, when I became a single parent, and I became a residential custodial parent raising my kids, having the responsibility of financially providing and putting all of these things when I didn't have not much more than eight years of experience, a car full of stuff to drive back home from California to Chicago. And I panicked, I was freaking out. I was like, what do I do? I feel powerless. I feel like nobody understands me. I'm a United States Marine that nobody's willing to get me a job. Nobody's willing to get me a job. I've got all these years of experience. I've been my combat tours, et cetera, et cetera. But no, nobody's giving me a shot. What do I do? And what I realized is that I was dealing with a lot of excuses. And excuses are nothing more than dealing with a short bit of happiness. I'm a little safe spot for a moment, maybe for a day, maybe for a week, maybe even for a month. I'm living this excuse, I'm living this excuse, I'm living this excuse, short-term happiness, because it gives me the freedom to not have to do anything. But that excuse is the expense of the long-term freedom and satisfaction I'm really looking for. That's the cost of dealing and allowing an excuse to manifest, grow, and allow yourself to say, you know what, that's the status. It is what it is. By the way, I hate that, I hate that term. Is there anything I despise and hate? It's that term, it is what it is. Which means that to me, how I define it, maybe you agree with me or not, and let me know in the comment section below if you do or not, is when people say it is what it is. Because it almost comes, it almost sounds like an excuse to me. It is what it is. Pandemic, it is what it is. This lockdown, it is what it is. No, 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 there's something we can always do. And what I've realized that being locked down is less physical and more mental. Let me repeat that one more time. Being locked down is more mental than it is physical. Listen, I've been all across this world through the United States Marine Corps deployments, even, even across the world through travel now as an entrepreneur. And I've realized there's really crappy places around the world. And what a best place to be locked down and be in the United States of America. What a great place to be locked down at here. We have running water. We, we got at least police. We have at least a president that shows that he's doing his part to lead this country, whether you agree with him or not, to do his part to make sure we come out of this thing, flatten the curve and get through this thing and get back to reopening the economy. So I realize there's five excuses that we will deal with in a lockdown type of situation that will not allow you 
to get ahead to where you want to go financially, especially if you want to become a millionaire. Excuse number one, I can't do anything. Wow, I can't do anything, Matt. You're so lucky because you can do what you want, but I can't do anything. Listen, man, you can do a lot of things. One thing I'm glad that you have, I'm glad you got a cell phone. Oh, you don't have a cell phone? How are you watching this video? I'm glad you have access to some Wi-Fi. Somehow, some way, you found access to a medium that gets you the opportunity to watch this video. So you can do something. So don't allow yourself to buy into the excuse that you can't do anything. Last time I checked, if you are physically able, you got breath in your lungs, you're strong today, you're not mentally or physically disabled, man, you can do a lot of things. And what am I talking about? Maybe you're used to going to the gym working out. Well, why don't you work out in your backyard? Why don't you work out in your garage? Why don't you bring the one or two people that you can with respect to the, the social distancing to get them to help you to work out and, and encourage you, maybe through an app, maybe through online, maybe through Zoom. You can connect, you can do something. Well, Matt, you don't understand, man. I'm, I'm so disconnected from people that I love and care about. Listen, I know it sucks that we have to be separated for a moment, but it's a brief period of time. It's not going to be forever, it's a brief, period of time so you can do something number two excuse man i can't make money i can't clock in and get a job i know C completely understand if you're nine to five you find yourself being in a uh, non-essential type of worker and by the way who can determine whether you're essential or non-essential or not i don't know but listen you can do something about that situation listen one of my back was pressed up against the wall and i was not happy about my financial situation i said you know what it's going to be it's going to be up to me and I need to find a way to make some money. You know, long before we shifted into the online type of virtual type of commerce, because listen, our business, we're still taking off. We're actually breaking records from last year compared to this. And this is a pandemic situation we're going through. We weren't going through a pandemic last year, and yet we're still breaking records this year. The quality of the people that we're attracting to our firm, the quality of the business we're attracting to our company, we are helping not only ourselves, but other people make money. So please don't buy into the excuse that you can't make money. It may not be clocking in at the GIF loop job that I used to have. It may not be clocking at the restaurant that I used to work at. I mean, I'm not clocking in at the, uh, the YMCA lifeguard I used to be at, but there's ways to make, you can make money today that wasn't around and readily available 10 years ago. There's people making money today online, virtually. There's people making money today using just cell phones or, or calling in and they're learning a new skill. They're learning a new trait. They're getting involved in something they never thought they'd get involved before. So, yeah, I know you probably can go to work the same way you used to work. This is an opportunity for you to learn a new skill. This is an opportunity for you to build new relationships. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to create an interest, a hobby, something you're passionate about and find a way to monetize it, to actually make money doing it. This is an opportunity, for, listen, I'll give you an example. I said, kids, teach me TikTok. The kids were giving me an excuse that they, uh, puppy, you know, we can't clock in at McDonald's. No problem. But can we help you make some social media videos? You can. Let me learn TikTok. Teach me TikTok. And here's some of the videos that we've done on TikTok. And, and I didn't realize that uh, there was such a platform on TikTok to expand and build our personal brand. But for every video, I give them X amount of dollars. For any time it goes over 20,000, 50,000 views because we just started our account, there's a bonus. So there's a way that's creatively that we can create and use our skills, the things that we're naturally good at, to monetize that. For example, we created another job. The gentleman's shooting my video right now. He got his brother to come to my house. He got a job. He's calling me and texting me, hey, Matt, I think it's raining. Let me call you the day after it's raining. Let me go wash your car. He's, he, he became fruitful. He says, I can make money. And guess what? He's only in high school. So if a high school student is out hustling you, what does that tell you about you making an excuse that you can't make money? There's many different ways for you to make money. You just haven't expanded in thought bigger than what you're currently thought, thinking about right now, here's your opportunity. Number three, this is an excuse for you to be sick. Like you, you say, oh my gosh, you know, I got the COVID, I got this, I got the Rona. Listen, I know there's caution. I know there's, there's many different ways that people say, you know, I think I got it. You, you, you might be scared for a minute. I get it. I totally get it. You might be fearful. Get checked out. Go do things that's necessary to make sure you're too healthy. Make sure that you're not uh, caring and, and spreading to other people. Get checked out if you think you're sick. Do your responsibility to take care of yourself because you ain't no good to anybody else so you can take care of yourself. But with that being said, don't fake it that you got the Rona. Don't fake the fact that you're sick. Don't fake the fact that you, oh, I can't make money, blah, 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 this, because I think I got the Rona. I think I got the coronavirus. I think I've got the COVID. Listen, for some people, listen, I've, I've heard the excuses and come to find out they're all right. Matter of fact, a good friend of mine, he actually, he's a, he's a first responder. He, he went through the coronavirus for three days, four days. He was in, in uh, ICU. But guess what? Three, four days after ICU, he's discharged. A week later, he's fine. So as many people are seeing that there's horror stories and sadly with respect to people sadly dying from this horrendous virus but there's great community out there people who are beating the virus too as well 
So what do you want to believe in? That this thing is dis disabling you from actually making money and getting hit financially and eliminating excuses so therefore you can start thinking bigger and more importantly doing bigger because you got to go through this. Listen, take care of your body, do, do your preventative measures, stay healthy, stay safe, but outside of that, don't use this coronavirus situation that you can't do anything. If you got sound mind, sound body, you have internet, you have, the, you have cell phone, you have people you connect with, you have social media to connect with, goodness gracious. You have an opportunity here to do something in this very moment. Don't use this coronavirus pandemic as an excuse why you cannot do something. Matter of fact, it should be your reason. Point number four. This is my excuse to start depending more upon the government. This is my excuse to be depending on somebody else. This is my excuse to be depending on somebody to take care of me. Listen, that excuse is not gonna get you anywhere. Matter of fact, it's getting you lazier. When you're using that excuse to say, you know what? You know, I can't do that, I can't do it. Let me just rest on unemployment. Let me just rest on the next bump in the stimulus. Listen, you're asking the question, by the way, that's our money too as well. It's just not your money, it's our money. You think you're getting over on the government, you're getting a government check. That's all of us included, because eventually you and I will have to pay that money back. Do you, do you not think we have to pay it back? Well, of course we have to pay it back. They added it to the national deficit, the federal deficit. And, and in fact, we're in a low tax environment right now. So if you want to make your millions, and you, make your, you don't make your millions now, you make your millions 20, 30 years from now, guess where you think the federal income tax bracket's supposed to be in the next 20, 30, 40 years? Have to have to pay 20 plus trillion dollars in national deficit. Where do you think the money's gonna come from? By the way, by the way 20 years comes by, it's probably gonna be like 50, 60 trillion dollars. By the way, we'll timestamp, we'll see 20, 30 years from now what the federal deficit is. I was saying this in 2020, we're over 20 trillion. It's probably gonna be 50, 60 trillion dollars by the time you reach here 20, 30, 40 years from now. Let me know, by the way, let me know what you think of the federal deficit is gonna be in the next 20, 30 years. But with that being said, if you're depending on the government to continually bail you out, bail you out, bail you out, there was an investment banker out there I said, you know what, if you fail, you fail, right? And by the way, he, he wasn't getting a lot of fans for that. Matter of fact, I don't think they, they're going to invite him back to the show, but there's an investment banker out there, Chamath, he says, you listen, if you fail as a company, you don't deserve to be bailed out. You deserve to what? You deserve to fail. So therefore, you can come back up, pick yourself back up and learn from the mistakes you learned from that failure, so therefore you do it again much better Instead of depending upon the federal government to bail you out, instead of waiting for somebody else to give you a handout, I limped, I limped, but I'm using something else as a crutch versus me actually getting better. See, this is what this pandemic is teaching guys like me, helping our community, is how do we use this pandemic? How do we use this lockdown to become better in all aspects of our lives? But if you say, you know what, I'm dependent on somebody else to take care of me, I'm gonna be dependent on somebody else. Listen, you're not looking for financial independence, you're looking for financial dependence. So what do you wanna do? Do you want to be independent financially or do you want to be dependent financially? Right now, this moment, the choice is yours. Either use that as an excuse or use that as a reason. Which leads me to my last point, number five. You can use the excuse of what? <laughs> my, by the way, this is my favorite excuse. I'm going to use this as an excuse to change and improve. Woo! What a concept. When you use this excuse as a reason to change and improve, guess what happens to you and, 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 and the difference between you and your competition and everybody else out there? Listen, the reason why millionaires are millionaires, the reason why decamillionaires are decamillionaires, the reason why billionaires are billionaires is why? They think differently. So if you want to get ahead financially, guess what? Get your mind right. Get your heart right. Get your spirit right. And then eventually, you can get your money right. But this is an opportunity for you to use this pandemic as an excuse to change, adapt, pivot, and improve. Watch out what happens when you decide to do that. In other words, you're converting your excuses into what? Now you're converting your excuses into reasons. And once you do that, guess what? There's a whole next best version of you that you get introduced to. Unless you deal with your excuses, nothing in your life changes. So let me help you. I'd love for you to process this scenario, to process this period of time by asking yourself these several questions. Ask yourself, what will this line of thinking get me? Am I thinking too short term or does it really help me long term? Next set of questions you should ask yourself is this, what example will my kids see of me and follow and adopt themselves? Because I'm just translating what I'm doing to them. Because kids don't believe what they hear, they believe what they see. Next question you should ask yourself, am I selling for good enough or am I waiting for somebody else to take care of me? Am I being too passive about the situation versus being proactive about the scenario? Whichever excuse that you decide to use and settle down with is expression and an exposure of your character. It's also an exposure and a reflection of the people you're hanging with and, and talking to. It's also a reflection of how small or big you're choosing to think. If you dare yourself to process the scenario and the situation by asking yourself 
these questions and actually coming up with an answer, watch out. You'll find out another version of yourself that's gonna be processing things and doing things much differently than you were before. I remember one time, my mentor, Patrick but David, we were processing some scenarios and situations because I had a very poor outing. We, we hosted an event that asked me a speaker at, and uh, he came out, he said, Mr. Sapala, Mr. Money Smart Guy, this is your big event? I said, yeah, well, I, well, you didn't think it was a big event, Patrick? I thought that was pretty big. I said, dude, you're the Mr. Money Smart Guy, you're the leader and founder of the Money Smart Movement, and uh, this is the biggest event you can pull together? I'm like, dang, am I thinking that small? And I, and I almost came across with this excuse. I said, you know what? Well, I just got here. You know, this is new to me. I almost found myself buying into those excuses. And I challenged myself to say, you know what? Before I answer my mentor, I said, you know what? what? What could I have done better? What am I not seeing? What should I be considering the next time I do this? Listen, the last thing I want to do is let my mentor think that I'm not thinking big. I thought this was big. I've, obviously, it's not big enough. And so he suggested some changes. And I found some leaks in my business. My wife and I are sitting down there, blah, blah, blah. My business partner sitting down there, blah, blah, blah. Goodness gracious, we realized we weren't standardized. We realized that we're all over the place. We realized that we're shooting our business from the hip. We realized that the people we're talking to and the lack of leadership on my end, that my business was going away from me versus me being more disciplined and systematizing it. And so we soon have found those leaks. And when Patrick looks up, he says, oh my goodness. He says, w -w -w Patrick, what's that? Oh my goodness, he goes, oh my goodness. You're about to go into uncharted territory. <laughs> and guess what? We've been in uncharted territory ever since he said it to us. But we've been controlled, we've been systematized, and not only going through this crisis, we're leading through this crisis and we're growing through this crisis. Why? Because we're able to process this issue and take a very uncomfortable scenario and situation and say, you know what, let me own it. Let me get better. Let me start myself with a leader, a mentor, somebody who's gonna, is a thought leader in their, in their field, that's a thought leader in, in how big they're thinking. Let me say, you know what, let me lay down my ego right quick and let me grow. Our guys that we're coaching and mentoring as entrepreneurs building their own business, they've not been depending upon this PPP, SBA PPP loan, this federal stimulus plan, they've not been depending on their stimulus check. Matter of fact, the guys were coaching and teaching and, and grooming, the last, the last thing they've been bringing up to me is, oh my gosh, I got my stimulus check. You gotta use that stimulus check. But none of my guys right now say, you know, if I get my stimulus check, I don't really need it. Matter of fact, some of my guys have actually gone and bought food. Some of my guys, out of their kindness of their hearts, are go out and, 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 and sending food to DoorDash and grub up to people in need. They're giving out food. They're giving out assistance. They're giving out help. And guys, these were just average and ordinary people right before we met them. Why? Because they chose to buy into excuse number five, using a crisis to get better, a crisis to improve. My encouragement to you, use this crisis to figure out what you're going to be, what you're all about, especially in this scenario. And listen, you gotta be shameful about whatever situation you are, or you can be very proud of where you're at. But use this situation, good or bad, so therefore you can improve, and if you're getting better and better, help somebody out. So that being said, guys, I love to know your thoughts, I love to know what you're thinking, I love to know your feedback, we've been getting a lot of great interaction with you guys. What are you going to relieve yourself an excuse of in this moment? Put it down in the comment section below. I'd love to know your replies to this video. With that being said, guys, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're nearing closing in on 15,000 subs. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, hit our Facebook page and say like. I wanna see more content information from the Money Smart Guy. Make sure you follow me on Instagram at Money Smart Guy. Thanks for tuning in. With that being said, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.